Now, the rest of the story. General Antonio Lopez, Mexican dictator in exile. Nobody knows why our Secretary of State offered him refuge here. And yet here he was, living in a small house on Staten Island, contemplating a way to regain his dictatorship. What he needed was to raise enough money to equip an army large enough to march on and capture Mexico City. And that would take a lot of money. For this, too, the deposed dictator had a plan. A prospective business venture that would earn him many times the amount he required. In 1869, an aging, exiled Mexican dictator is living on Staten Island. His name, Antonio Lopez. Early in that year, General Antonio began hearing about a Manhattan inventor named Tom Adams. In fact, the general was so impressed by what he heard that he invited Tom to Staten Island for a visit. Much to Tom's surprise, he found the general a trim, vigorous, enthusiastic septuagenarian. His eyes gleamed as he spoke of past glory, and then he confided his hope for the future to liberate his country, to move in with troops and seize power once more. But yes, he would need a great deal of money to organize an army of that size. Just as Tom was wondering where he fit into the general's master plan, the general reached down beside his chair and lifted a heavy parcel to his lap. Here, said the general, take it. Then he explained. The parcel contained coagulated sapodilla latex. It came from trees that grew in Mexico. Vulcanized, it could be an excellent substitute for rubber. Well, in those pre-polyethylene days of our human history, if you were searching for a material that looked like rubber and was pliable like rubber, you were pretty much stuck with rubber. The first man to produce an economically viable synthetic or natural substitute would almost certainly become a multimillionaire. At the same time... Crude rubber was going for a dollar a pound. Sapodillo latex, General Antonio assured inventor Tom, could be had for only five cents a pound. Vulcanize this, said the general, and we shall both be wealthy men. During the months that followed, inventor Tom Adams tried every way he knew to vulcanize Sapodillo latex. In the process, he ruined all of his wife's pots and pans, but still no luck. The stuff just would not vulcanize. At long last, General Antonio finally gave up on Tom and took advantage of political amnesty and returned home. An ungloriously retired Mexican dictator. The one fellow who did not give up on Tom was Tom Adams. And though he never did discover a way to vulcanize Sapodillo latex, he found another use for it. And did he cash in on it? For so was born one of the world's largest industries. The general never knew. His dreams dead. At last he died in Mexico. At the age of 81, impoverished and powerless and forgotten. But history remembers him instead as the man who once murdered Jim Bowie and Davy Crockett at the Alamo. For he was General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. And the industry he left behind, the big business, which might have relaunched his political career in his waning years, began with Tom Adams' newfound use for the sap of the sapodillo tree, an invention called chewing gum. And now you know the rest of the story.